Podcast City Network. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. A shot of entertainment to the head. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the entertainment. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Everett Lee Show podcast. I am the Everett Lee. I'm going to give a shout out to everyone who follows me on social media over on Facebook, Everett Lee Show, on Twitter, at the Everett Lower Score Lee, and right here on Podcast City Network, the official host of the Everett Lee Show. You may notice I'm streaming back on Podcast City Network's Twitch channel tonight, and of course on my Everett Lee Show Facebook page, the Everett Lee Show. But Hope everyone's having a good night and going to have a fantastic, amazing podcast tonight because I have returning back on the podcast. They haven't been on here since episode 46 and we're up to, I think uh, this is episode 164. So it's been a minute since I've had both guests on at the same time tonight. I want to welcome to the program none other than film director and producer Tom Ryan and film producer and maybe director, we can add that to your credit there, Todd Sturuch. <laughs> hey, Denver, what's going on? Not much, man. Not much. Good evening. It's great to have you guys both back on, man. It's been a while since I've had you both on on the on the program, man. It's been what about a couple of years since I've had you both back on. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. Yeah, uh, quite a stretch, man. It seems feels like it was just yesterday. <laughs> I know, I know. It it feels it feels like uh, I just had you on just like last week talking about the the uh, theater of terror anthology, man. I mean, I know a lot's been going on since since uh, since I last talked to you. What what's exactly been going on? You feed me some details, man, on what's been happening since I last talked to you. Yeah. So um, we. Um we enjoyed a lot of success with the, uh, with the theater of terror anthology. Um, people really liked our stories, our format. Um, we had some really successful screenings, got a lot of great feedback. Um, we recently secured a distribution deal with Save You Entertainment um, for the film. Really successful and, um, got so a lot of great it's, feedback. it's, it's, um, it's really resonated we well with the audience. And so we collectively discussed our next move as the Theater of Terror, and we decided that we were going to dive into a follow-up anthology. We had some more short stories to tell, uh, some more eerie tales of terror. And, uh, yeah, so we're, we, we got a full head of steam. We're, we're, um, we're pursuing that right now. Uh, we start shooting in February. Excellent, excellent. I, I love, the, love the post up on the Theater Anthology Facebook page there, with everything that uh, that's come out and it's been happening. I I do want to say, man, congratulations on the New York City uh film festival where you've won like an awards for like uh best actor in a sci fi short with uh Russell Hackett and best director of a sci fi yep. short yourself there, Tom. And uh best sci fi yep. short thank you for abducted. You're welcome. It's just yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, that was great. That was actually the Cutting Room Film Festival, uh-huh. um, and uh, just a wonderful uh, event, a wonderful venue, and a great night for us. And uh, yeah, they loved they loved Abducted. Abducted has been one of the uh, more um, well received shorts uh, from the bunch. Uh, a lot of people really uh, enjoyed that segment. Uh, it's a favorite of a lot of our uh, of a lot of our fans and our friends. And uh, yeah, at that film festival, it was really, uh, it, it really uh, did it. Uh, it went well, and we had a great audience reception. And um, yeah, we were we were very uh, pleased to have won those awards. Uh, Russell Hackett for best actor, and uh, yeah, I got best director, which was a shock and uh, a very um, humbling and, and exciting. And it was just great. It was a great team win that night, and uh, a wonderful film festival. Nice. Yeah, I gotta I gotta give props too to Russ. For that, you know, it's it, it, it when you when you find someone who can fit a very specific role really well, mm-hmm. it's a great thing. And and we like to tease Russ on set, you know, um, 
but it's all it's all in fun. We 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 take a lot of shots at each other to kind of keep things light on set. Because I'll tell you, we froze our asses <laughs> shooting that film. You know, uh-huh. out in the woods in the middle of the night. You know, in twenty something degree weather. And everyone just did a kick-ass job, and and Russ w- Russ was great. So he he won a couple of Best Actor awards for for Abducted, and and they they were well deserved, as, as were all the other accolades uh, for for everybody else uh, for that film. Very, very well deserved. Nice, nice. Yeah, That's... that was that was Russ's second Best Actor award for that performance. So he definitely, yeah, Russ found that character. Oh, nice, nice, and that's abducted. Now, the theater and now the theater anthology films is a collection of short films. And what if people that's not familiar with it, can you uh, um, explain what the uh, theater of terror anthology is about? Well, it, it, it's it's basically a, a throwback anthology. Um, you have your four short stories and we have a wraparound narrative. Um, It basically centers around a young girl um, by the name of Amber that volunteers to help a theater that's um, uh, in danger of being closed and uh, needs volunteers to help them renovate and to keep the place operational. When she arrives there, the theater is already closed. Uh, She's too late. um, But this uh, caretaker of the theater invites her in for a tour of the theater and she begins to watch these four short stories. Um, there is a no, there are loose connections from each short from one to the other. They're all very different genres, uh, dark drama, creature feature, sci-fi and a horror. Um, there's loose connections between all of them, but it's really her story in that theater that connects all of them. Um, I don't want to give away exactly what's happening there, mm-hmm. but, um, with our follow-up anthology return to the theater of terror, um, a nice throwback title we want to use as well. But uh, <laughs> that one is going to, that we're probably going to follow suit with what that narrative was in the first film. So um, that's a little tidbit there that we're kind of going with. So Yeah, the, yeah if anybody, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was going to say the, uh, I saw the, uh, the poster, the, the, that list all the movies for the return of the, Theater of Terror. It, the, the listing and the names, the shorts sound amazing. They sound yes. really interesting. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there we we're really excited about this. Um, these these new shorts that we've got because uh, you know once again we get to play with a, a lot of different actors, a lot of different stories and characters. Um, some different effects artists were getting involved in this follow up film, and so. Um, um, so in, in regards to visual effects, which we're adding um, um, to, to the menu this time, and, and we're, we're, we're still old school. We do all practical effects, but uh, regarding some of these films, there's just nothing we can do practically um, um, in, in, some, in some instances. So we're, we're incorporating that into our production, and we're just excited because these stories are um, – it's just some of our best stuff, and I think it's going to be uh, – very much like the first one. It's going to be a nice variety of storytelling and uh, definitely with that Twilight Zone feel um, where I think we're going to creep people out with some of these. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Nice. Nice. What What you wanted to add, Todd, before we... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I forgot. That was like three minutes ago. So <laughs> I, I'm forgetful these days. Now, what I was going to say was it's very... As Tom mentioned, just to piggyback what Tom said, it's very reminiscent to movies like um, Twilight Zone, the movie, mm-hmm. Creep Show, yeah. um, uh, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, you know, Asylum, things like that where they're very distinct individual stories, right. but there's a, a, a sort of a thread that winds through all of them, binding them together. When, you know, the first project came around, I'm a huge fan of horror anthology. So mm-hmm. when Tom came and said, Hey, I'm working on an anthology. I said, I- I'm in, you don't even have to say anything else. I'm in, <laughs> you know, just cause I, I love that. I, for whatever reason, I just love that format. So I'm psyched to, to get started on the, on the, the new one. We, we do have four 
really strong stories. And, and one thing, when we sat down to talk about the next project, we said we, we feel we did a really, really good job on the first one. Mm-hmm. But we want to try to step up our game on the second one and just learn and build on what we've done before and just take it up a notch, whether it's with the acting, the direction, the writing, the music, the effects. We want to just take everything to to the next level and, and just better ourselves in general and just really blow everyone away with this next one. Mm-hmm. That's that's amazing, man. That's amazing. I love the titles, man. Sooth Slayer. Robot, Splinter, and uh, my eyesight is just killing me. I got this uh, on haunted. my haunted. Hun- <laughs> haunted or hunted? Haunted. Haunted. haunted, haunted, yeah, yeah. It's just on my end there. My my screen is just for for what I'm using is like down downsized. It did an update, and I'm listening to her squinting. I'm like, damn. I got to pull the monitor closer. I'm gonna have to get some fucking glasses. <laughs> yeah. Technology's great. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I, 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 I'm excited. I wasn't able to purchase the DVD Blu-ray off your uh, website, but I did read today or a few days ago that on uh, February 25th. It's going to be distributed on Bayview Entertainment, and it's going to be streaming on Amazon. Is that correct? Yeah, so as far as the streaming, um, that hasn't been confirmed yet. Um, okay. But they've, it's, that's still being negotiated, but they have released it on DVD and Blu-ray. Um, and it's through quite a few sites like Barnes & Nobles and Amazon Prime and uh, a few other outlets like that um, that you can order it online. I, mm-hmm. I, I think now you could pre-order it. I, I did see links for it, so I'm not sure if it. I don't. It might already be available, but February 25th was the announced date when it would be available. But yeah, we're excited about that. Uh, Bayview's been great to us, and um, you know I'm really looking forward to uh, to working with them, and and um, you know hopefully with this follow-up film we might uh, uh, develop a relationship with them. But they've they've been a, um, really um, good with us communi- communication-wise, and and just what they've kind of. Uh, you know, discuss what we're looking at here just as far as getting our film out to the public, which is really important to us to just get out to a broader audience. So the kind of stuff that we've discussed, which is our vision for Theater of Terror, is uh, kind of coming to fruition, and it's uh, paid off the hard work that we put in. Oh, yeah. It 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 has, man. I mean, just just winning winning awards at uh, film festivals and just just the... The throwback to the classic like Twilight Zone, like like you mentioned. I remember watching the Twilight Zone movie in the beginning of it. That scared the shit out of me, man. <laughs> and just yeah. just uh, the the um, the the remake. I know they did. That's the one I saw. I never really. I I remember watching like years ago. Sci Fi did like a marathon of the Twilight Zone, and me and my friends we yeah. sat there and we watched it. And it was like this is some great this is some great stuff, man. And just having the little short stories and stuff and week by week. But the, it was just the, everything was solid and put together so well. And another another like antholo- uh, anthology that uh, was released was uh, Creep Show One and Two. I remember Creep Show Two very really well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I love both of them. Um, I, I uh, all, all the stuff that we've done uh, with these films definitely comes from that place, and especially the reason we always reference the Twilight Zone or the Outer Limits or Night Gallery uh, is because a lot of people that are not necessarily horror fans were fans of those shows, those eerie stories, those you know, those kind of twisted tales, because um, it's not over the top violence or or or. Um, um, in some cases you might have it in our show. It's not, it's not the focus. Uh, I don't think, and it's, it's not, um, it's not an important element of it. I think our storytelling is what, um, is really influenced by watching, sh- um, anthologies like the twilight zone. It's like, they could really draw you in with a story that has nothing frightening about it. Just something very eerily depressing, morbid and miserable about what happens to the character. And that's, something that we definitely try to achieve with with these that's the kind of storytelling that we're trying to achieve because i feel 
that it really appeals to a broader audience um, than if we just kind of made another slasher flick. And without any offense to slasher flicks, I love them, but I don't feel like we have anything to offer that genre right now or that mm-hmm. specific type of you know uh, um, character. But this stuff, we've got just a great variety of subject matter at our disposal um, because you know we, we have a broader audience to, that we can appeal to. Right. Right. Um, Twilight Zone. What what would be your favorite episode of Twilight Zone? I have a couple that were my favorite. Uh, what would be one of your favorites that you can think off the top of your top of your head? Like the old the classic the classic Twilight Zone. What what would be your favorite episode? We'll start. Well, with- well God, yeah. Go ahead. Why don't we let Todd answer that while I think about yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Uh- there, there's so many, but uh, I, you know, there's so many that are are really good. I mean, I think um, it's a good life is is probably one of my favorites. Um, it brings the ter- the phrase "wish it into the cornfield" into the mainstream mm-hmm. because it's just so so creepy. Right. Like everybody remembers Opie, Will, you know, and Will Robinson, and then to have him as that kind of a horrific uh character um really gets to everyone um time enough at last with burgess meredith just because it's such a a downer like it's you know this guy just all he wants to do is have time to read and you know finally he can and what happens he drops and he breaks his glasses and you're like oh man you know (laughs) didn't didn't see that coming yeah. Um, and then finally, probably, you know, I, I can't remember the title of it, but there's an episode it's with William Shatner, of all people. And he's he's in a diner and, you know, he's getting his car fixed. He's with his fiance and, and and, and you know, he's playing with one of them fortune teller machines and the fortune teller like he starts to believe that it really can predict the future. Um, and it, it's starting to control his life, you know. Uh-huh. And then finally, he's he's able to break free, and they leave the town. And what do we see coming into the diner? Another couple that are hopelessly uh, 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 addicted to this fortune teller machine, and they just do whatever it says, and and it, yeah. and it, it literally won't let them leave the, the town, so they're just stuck there. So, you know, any any of the stories that kind of have those sort of oh no twists at the yeah. end, you know. Yeah. And to Tom's point, that's what we were going for. Um, you know, we, we didn't, uh, you know, the, it seems just to take a quick side note here. It seems that like there's so many indie films today that rely on violence and gore. And there's definitely an audience for that. Like I'm a bit of a gore hound. Right. But, uh, you know, we found like even like at the conventions and the and the festivals and stuff where we were selling the movie we were able to get a, a, a lot more people interested and, and ultimately have a lot more sales by appealing to that audience that wasn't really looking for the uh, over the top violence. So, right. You know, that's, that's why we relied on stories like that where they do have a bit of a morbid kind of uh, ending, uh-huh. but not necessarily a violent one. So, yeah. Oh my God, I could go on and on for hours about the Twilight <laughs> Zone. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Tom. <laughs> yeah. So the episodes that Todd mentioned, those are some of my favorites too. Um, right. Another one that I saw recently in the marathon that I forgot about that I really like is, uh, and and forgive me, but I'm not going to remember the titles to any of these. Um, uh, these three soldiers um, return in this crashed aircraft, and uh, two of them are in the hospital. And, um, um, one by one, they start to cease to exist uh-huh. and, um, but they're kind of, they, everyone forgets who they are. So basically one guy's left in the hospital, one guy recovers and goes with the, the second guy to go have drinks and something's happening to that, to that second guy. And he's, he's acting strange and he goes into the phone booth and he just disappears and the, Everybody that saw him disappears, like panics, and he turns to everybody and says, "Did you see what happened to him? Where did what happened to him?" And everybody's like, "Who are you talking about?" And a minute ago, everyone was just talking to the guy, and they saw him, but uh-huh. they would forget that he existed immediately. And by the end of the episode, all three of them cease to exist, 
and no one around them remember it. So it was almost like an episode that meant that they maybe should have been dead, right. that they survived the accident, but then they, you know, it was kind of rectified by fate somehow. But uh, that was a great episode. Um, I mean, I could just, I could just go on and on. Uh, Gosh, um, the one where the guy has the gambling problem and the and the uh, and the and the, the uh, slot machine comes into his room in the oh, hotel room. Yeah, <laughs> like that yeah, one. yeah, it's that was like, crazy. Like addiction episode. Yeah, it's like an episode about addiction. We <laughs> really uh, just great storytelling and just fun. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I could name a, a hundred episodes. It would just take me a while to remember each and every one. <laughs> one, one of the episodes that sticks in my head that sticks out to me was the episode where the guy travels back in time because he 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 because to make it rich, and the the beginning of the episode, the he's like uh, he he's like well known and he's like um, he there's a janitor involved. And you probably know which one I'm talking about, where he goes back in time and he he's he's going to make it rich. He's going to make it. And uh, he there's gold or whatever it is or oil underneath the town. And he's like, he's like, you know, what's underneath there. It's in oil or gold and I'm going to make it and I'm going to dig it out, dig it out and be rich. And they're like, yeah, we know it's down there. And he was all shocked about it. And they're like, yeah, it's like we can't get it out because of the uh, technology and stuff. And he ends up like becoming like a homeless person in the future and then the janitor becomes yeah you know which one i'm talking about that one that that one was yeah yeah i i do remember that one yeah and and you just made me um i just recalled one other one last one i'll mention that i think is great it's the guy with the dummy he's a ventriloquist yeah um and the dummy's talking to him he's Uh got a really bad attitude with him (laughs) and the the, the dummy murders someone and I, i forget I think at the end, the dummy is in the guy and the guy is in the dummy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I'm right about that switch, but I know that the dummy is definitely in the guy. Yeah. 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 yeah it is a switch because at the end, the, 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 the guy comes out and he resembles the dummy and the dummy is, is, uh, looks more like the actor who yeah. played the guy. Uh, so yeah, they changed the dummy. So yeah, that one was a very creepy episode. If yeah. you never saw that one. Yeah, I remember that one, man. That that was that was creepy. Yeah, dummies always get. <laughs> yeah, those dummies. <laughs> those dummies, right, Todd, man. You big dummy. Yep. <laughs> well, Twilight Zone inspired my hatred of ventriloquist dummies and porcelain dolls, all because yeah. of Talkie Tina. You remember the episode? I'm talking Tina, and I'm going to kill you. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. God, the creepy yeah. shit. Fuck that doll. <laughs> Fuck it in a fire! I swear to God. Yeah, <laughs> I get. They, wait, am I allowed to curse? Am I allowed to like curse that. on the show? I can't remember. Yeah, there's no filter, man. That's why I throw the prevent advisory up at the beginning of the episode. No filter. <laughs> I, I yeah, I, I I guess it's too late now. I already did it. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the porcelain dolls, man. Those things creep the shit out of me. They they always have. And what made it worse was when they started doing those movies with Annabelle, the doll. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? We got another commercial, average uh, trailer for a killer doll. I mean, I can stand Chucky. I can get, but like, just I don't know. They just stand there and just stare at you. You know, just. <laughs> looking at you. Oh, they're fucking evil. No, at least you look at Chucky and you're like, yeah, that fucking thing is going to kill somebody. Mm-hmm. But dolls are like supposed to be things that like children play with and they're nice and everything. But no, barf that. They're fucking evil. <laughs> and that's that. They should all be burned in a giant bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I saw, I've seen some pretty good movies over the last couple, few weeks, and I watched a few, last week, or a couple weeks ago, I watched a movie from a uh, another um, independent film director and producer up in uh, New York there, um, Hilton Ariel Ruiz. He finally, re- finally released Zombie with a Shotgun, and I watched it on Amazon Prime, loved it, and loved everything he did with the movie. Then... This past weekend, I sat down and I watched uh, Jeremiah Kemp's Black Wake. And <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 I, I love. Such lo- a fun movie to work on. 
I oh I bet I bet because I was watching that movie and I'm sitting there watching and just getting the story. I'm like, this is pretty damn good, and just watching it and uh, I'm in the back of my head. I'm like, where is Tom? Where is where's Todd? Where are they? And all of a sudden, Todd shows up, and then I'm like, cool fishing vest, <laughs> and then yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they show they show Tom, you know, going to the beach. You know, he's like sitting there, you know, with the fish pole. He's like, yeah, I'm popping a beer, drinking it. And then I just started rolling when the part where the guy comes walking, and then here comes here comes Tom, rolling, just tuck and roll. And he's like, hey man, you okay? Yeah. And then just I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, that was a great day on set. That's one of those. Um, that's one of those experiences that uh, you know I'll never forget. And uh, Jeremiah is a is a great friend, and he's a great director. And uh, yeah, he you know it was all, it's awesome because you know once in a while he he's, he could pull us in on some of his projects, and uh, to work on that one was a lot of fun. And that was a day, and it was literally a day on the beach, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, you know working in the sand and. Uh, I think that might have been the first time I met Beatrice Sniper, the effects artist, and she did the kind of splitting head uh, gag uh-huh. um, that day. And she was just, a, she's just the greatest. It's just such a pleasant uh, group of people to work with and just having fun making, you know, making a creepy creature feature, monster movie. So mm-hmm. um, I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. And what's great is that I'm playing the fisherman and Todd is also playing a fisherman. And I had no idea that him and I were basically, our characters were friends in the film because we were never on set together for the entire film. But we are friends in the movie. (laughs) And uh, so that was a lot of fun when we actually went to the premiere um, to see the uh, the scene play out and to see that we were the friends and uh, and the way it was cut together. It was just a lot of fun. It's just just such a cool movie. And Sarah Shoops is in that, and Pat Tadani, and... uh, uh, Kelly Legault is in it. I mean, there's so many great uh, people that we know um, that were in that film, and uh, a lot of us got to go and play uh, make believe together on the beach. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah it, it was great. Like, And so Jeremiah tells me, look, yeah, it's going to be like in two days, I need you on set. Oh, and you're going to be a fisherman. I'm like, fuck, I haven't been fishing in like 30 years. <laughs> so I run to like Dick's Sporting Goods and I buy like a tackle box and then I'm, I like buy this fishing vest. Like, I hope no one really pays attention because it really doesn't fit. It looks like I bought it at like the children's place, you know? <laughs> and uh, I like, look, whatever you do, Jeremiah, try not to like try not to make it too obvious, like that I'm a fat guy wearing a fishing <laughs> vest that's way too. Get funny. a little coat, <laughs> you know, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I could put it at baby cat, you know, but uh, but it, it was it was a lot of fun, you know, and and Jeremiah kept telling me, oh, the editor kept saying, oh, we love this guy, we love this guy. I'm like, I got like three lines in the movie, like what are they talking about? But it was a lot of fun, and like Tom said we know a ton of the people that were in that movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like a who's who of local indie talent. And that's yeah. one of the things I love about Jeremiah. Like he's always thinking of the other person. Like whenever there's a project coming up where he needs extras or someone to do a quick cameo, mm-hmm. he'll always reach out to like the same core group of us to get us to participate. Right. And we've all been in a bunch of his movies. Tom and I, I don't want to give anything away, but I'll just say that Tom and I were just recently in another uh, Jeremiah Kip project together. You know? Yep. Because he's always thinking of, of the local New York, New Jersey indie film community. And that's one of the things we, I about him. Yeah, we work for beer, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Exactly. That's good. Hey, I need you for a shoot. Come cheap. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we need you for a shoot. Bring a six pack. I'll be right there. It it's like it's I'll like right there. yeah, I'll be right there. It's it's like uh, my cousin. My cousin. I lived up in Tennessee. I asked my cousin. I needed some help on uh, working working on uh, getting changing out. I I had a regular stereo in my car. I wanted to get. I bought this uh, AM FM 
CD player. I mean, it was badass. The faceplate came off. It was one of those ones that you buy at like a Walmart, Kmart for like, you know, whatever it is. But I was like, I need some help getting in. Well, I'm kind of busy and stuff. And I was like, well, I was like, uh, how, I guess I'll put it in myself and have a cold one. Do you, you use a cold one? I was like, yeah. Give me a six pack and I'll be right there. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'll tell you what, though. But by the time we got done putting that uh, putting that radio in, um, radio worked, but everything else in the car didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, we had to re- awesome. had to rewire it the next day, man. Freaking headlights wouldn't come on, and just to come to find out, my our good friend was like, "Did you have uh, we?" My cousin Jason, his nickname was Spud. We called him Spud. He's like, "You had Spud work on the car?" Yeah. He's like, "God dang it, man!" It's like you don't need the solder stuff. I get they got a uh, kit to put on the back now. You don't need to cut wires. It's like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> He's like, bring the car over. I'll fix it. So we fixed it. We're going to take a break and give a shout out to the sponsors of Podcast City Network. The following support and sponsor Podcast City Network. City Limits Captain, Sports Bar in Deland, Florida. Has brew on tap, serves food. The grilled cheese is excellent. For upcoming events, check out City Limits Captain on Facebook.com slash City Limits Captain. Three Count Design offers a wide range of graphic design products, video, photography, and other forms of media. Everything from t-shirt designs to websites. Visit facebook.com slash three count design for more. All supporters and sponsors are brought to you by Podcast City Network. Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. For more of the Everett Lee Show on social media, follow and like. The Everett Lee Show on Facebook, The Everett Lee Show. Twitter, at The Everett underscore Lee. Instagram, Everett Lee Show. Audio versions of this podcast and previously released podcast can be found on everettleeshow.podbean.com. Stitcher Radio, The Everett Lee Show, give a rating and comment. Apple Podcast, The Everett Lee Show, give a rating and comment. YouTube, The Everett Lee Show, subscribe to the channel. The Everett Lee Show, you're shot of. Entertainment to the head. Hey fans, here at Podcast City Network, we have a lot of great shows on all of our great social media outlets. PodcastCity.net. Facebook.com slash Podcast City Network. Hit that thumbs up. You can send a tweet to Podcast City Network on Twitter at Podcast City Net. Only on Podcast City Network. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. The first CD I put in there to listen to was a um, Rush CD. <laughs> a Rush CD I have. Um, I have like the double double disc of their like greatest hits and stuff. And uh, I love that CD. And I, I've listened to it here recently after... Um, after the drummer passed away, man, and that that hit me as much as it did you, Todd, man. Because Rush, damn, they had they had some really good songs, man, really good stuff. Yeah, um, that yeah, that one hit me hard. Um, Rush is my favorite band, um, and I, it was so unexpected. You know, I the, he was definitely the more reclusive of the three band members, so. Mm-hmm even not the most hardcore fans like we didn't have any idea that he had brain cancer you know um so in fact tom i I didn't even know i was very busy at work that day so i wasn't really on social media or anything Mm -hmm. and then i get a text from tom like bad you know too bad about neil pert and i'm like well what about neil pert um and so i you know went online and i was hoping it was one of those hoaxes you know yeah but then it was everywhere. It was all over the place. And I'm like, no, it's true. So, and then, and then my social media lit up, you know, right. Um, as far you know, everything is subjective. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but for, for my money, he was the greatest rock drummer of all time. And, uh, I was very sad to hear that news. So, uh, rest in peace, Neil. Yeah. Yeah. I, it just, it, it's just, 
it, it shocked me, you know, hearing that he ended up just, uh, you know, passing away. I mean, it just, it really did get me there. Um, um, yeah, yeah. You guys are still on. Are you there? Uh, is Todd? I'm here. Yeah, is Tom still there? Uh, don't know. Uh, nope. Nope. Oh, okay. You know, good, good, good old Skype. Bro, it looks like <laughs> Skype blew him away. <laughs> you wanna, you wanna try you know calling, calling him back? Yeah. You know what? Fuck Tom anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, damn. Oh, damn. I'll just get to the rest of the show without him and, you know, talk about it behind his back. <laughs> no, but then he'll he'll cry about it. So let me, I'm going to call him back right now. So okay. here we go. Yeah. Anything that happens live, especially on the Everett Lee show, man. <laughs> yeah, well. It's like... Like yeah, and then I seen you, and it's like, like you guys still on? <laughs> yeah, you back, Tom? Yeah, there, Tom. there you yeah. go. Okay. Right. <laughs> I was like, ah, fuck him. I'm just gonna do the rest of the show without him and just say yeah. whatever I want about him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm taking over. I'm taking over. <laughs> I'm taking. Oh, my God. I'm oh take- yeah, it was totally an accident that Tom dropped off the call. Totally an accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's funny. I got some viewers in. Yeah, uh, good to be back. Yeah, it's, it's good to have you back, man. How was your trip? <laughs> great, man. It's great. Thanks. <laughs> I needed the time off. <laughs> <laughs> Get some. Like, uh, thank God I had to pee like a racehorse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got some uh, views in the uh, in the chat uh, on uh, Facebook Live right here on the Everett Lee Show page. I want to give a shout out and thank everyone for tuning in tonight here with my guests Tom Ryan and Todd Starutch of the Theater of Terror Anthology. David David C. Russell, he's laughing. He's LOL Todd always. It's always technical difficulty, Everett. Ah. Yeah. Dave, you can ask David because he knows. He, he's been in there with me a few times doing a podcast there. Um, he hosts his own podcast, Deathmatch Russell Podcast, on Podcast C Network. And um, you do too, uh, Todd, with uh, Scott Colbert, the Imaginarium. I want to say congratulations on hitting over 200 episodes, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I can't believe we've been doing that shit for so long. I mean,. Uh... You know, I, 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 it seems like I've just been doing that, that show forever. And, um, it, I, I, all kidding aside, it really is getting to do that show with Scott is, uh, is one of the highlights of, of my week. Mm-hmm. It's so much fun and it's so irreverent and we just have a good time. So yeah, 200 episodes, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I love, I love the one with the, when Tom, you got Tom on there, man, you guys, between you, Scott and Todd, I mean, Todd, damn, that, that was, that was great. That was a great episode, man. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, we're going to have, we're going to have Tom back on soon because we're nothing if not shameless self promoters. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Tom and I are working on a movie together. Scott is working on his new book. So we're going to all get together and stroke each other's egos, um, among other things. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your pillows. <laughs> Bring your pillows. <laughs> Damn. That's, that's, oh boy. That is that's when the show took an unexpected turn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I um, I know last time last time I had Tom on by himself, we were talking about Marvel movies and uh, heavy metal. We we're talking about Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. I mean, music I love listening to. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to ask you, how's uh, Vladdy and Haler? How's 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 that been going going for you there? How's the Man, band? It's slow going. You know, our our last album. It's been gosh, it's been probably about four years now. I uh-huh. think since our last album, so it's been too long. It's been way too long, and we're trying to write stuff. It's um, you know, it's it's difficult, man, with the families and and full time jobs, and 
you know, even making movies is tough uh, in that sense. And it's just, uh, it's a little bit slow going. Um, you know, one cool, one cool thing is we, we do get a couple of jams in here and there. We all stay in touch. We definitely want to record a new album. I just don't know when that's going to happen. Hopefully it happens in the next couple of years. We, <laughs> we've got some material that we've written that uh, just needs to be worked on and we just need to get together and find the time to do that. Um, what's cool is that, um, my guitar player, Anthony Lambides, and I um, have gotten to work on some stuff uh, together that we've used in some of the films recently. Yes. Uh, and uh, one of them is, uh, I don't know if Todd wants to talk about this project right now, but I'm going to bring it up. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we, dropped this, uh, we dropped one of our songs um, in um, intro to a film that Todd has just recently uh, directed called uh, The Bonds of Friendship. Uh, that I also star in and uh, yeah. So um, I, I edited the film and so I dropped this music into the film. And so it's been cool that I've been able to work with Tony. Tony and I also wrote the, the song devil's hiding, which was the opening song in abducted um, when you kind of see all the scenes of the countryside. So it's been fun to work with him and drop some of these songs in, in, uh, in some of these films. And, uh, but why don't I let Todd tell you a little bit more about the bonds of friendship, which, I'm really kind of excited about for his first project. It's, um, I think it's turning out really cool. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Tom. Um, so yeah, I, the bonds of friendship is a, a short film that I wrote and directed. Um, you know, I, I had been wanting to, to take a stab at, at directing for a while. Um, and, you know, and writing. I've, I've worked as crew on a lot of films. I've acted in a few films and I just had some stories percolating around in my head and just some quick background. I had, I had written a, a, a script called Splinter um, that was, was intended to be the first film that I wrote and directed. And I, and then I felt it was a little, a little ambitious for a first film. So Tom approached me and said, Hey, how about we adapt this to be one of the short films in the new anthology Mm -hmm. and then that way we'll have more resources we'll have a a bit of a budget that that, so we could really do the film the way i really had envisioned it so tom Mm -hmm. did some rewrites um to the script to kind of fit it um into the anthology and it and i think it's going to be really really good so I really wanted to take a stab at, at directing. So I just, I wrote this tight little uh, sort of crime drama, I guess you'd call it. Mm-hmm. It's only about six minutes and it's about two, you know, guys who have been best friends since they were little kids. They're like low level criminals uh-huh. and uh, they're, they're literally best friends. They, they have this unbreakable friendship and then an incident happens that tests this friendship up to an extreme degree right and the story basically tells what happens um in the in the wake of of this incident so nice um i had a blast working on it tom and i play the the, you know it's just the two of us Uh um and then there's another actress that does some voiceover um mark boutros did the cinematography and i just wanted to see if i could write and direct a, a short film and uh, Tom just got done editing it together into a, a, a first cut, which came out really good. Oh, nice. We have to put some finishing, some finishing touches on it. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, I, I hope to hit the festival trail with it this year. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about it. It was a great experience. I uh, had a great time working with Tom and, and Mark and, and the other, you know, people that helped me out with it. And right. yeah, so I'm looking forward to unleashing it. <laughs> that is that's amazing man that's amazing doing your doing a first your first film and stuff i mean I, i'm sure you picked up picked up quite a bit along the way working working with working in movies and and i mean you got like the best circle of friends you know with with everyone that loves and enjoys making films and that's that's amazing. I I did see something about that a while back ago, and I didn't. I looked and I was like, okay, this is this is pretty going to be pretty cool, man. I I'd definitely like to see something like that, man. <laughs> I definitely would. Uh, you're a hundred percent right. I could I could never 
possibly thank everybody enough. Um, just being in and around so many talented people now for about 10 years and just watching and learning and observing, that's what led up to giving me confidence to try to write and direct something, you know? Right. And boy, was it um, an eye-opening experience for me. Mm -hmm. The amount of work that goes in um, to even directing uh, uh, and starring in a, just a six minute film. Yeah. I give all the credit in the world to people that act in and direct their own movies because holy shit, that was hard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, so I have a debt to people like Tom and Jeremiah and Pat Devaney and, and all the and Manny Serrano and all the people that I've worked with and, and learned from over the years. Um, I, it's a debt that I, I really never could repay other than to just say thank you to everybody. That's You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is amazing. I will, I want to go back and just watch it because I watched it. I watched it a while back ago. I think it was last year. I watched it was faces I, I love that. Me and Jeremiah Kemp, when I had Jeremiah Kemp on, he was talking about that. We mentioned faces. We just we just love love that man. Just he, he loves he loves it when the character that you play, Tom, is w talking to all the faces in the wall and stuff. My favorite my favorite part of the movie is just how it ends. And I, I just I laugh and it put a smile on my face how that movie ended because it was just it was great, you know. It's just a great movie all around. Thank you. Yeah, that's that, that's uh, yeah. Of course, faces will always be near and dear to my heart. That film was my first feature film, and I got to work with you know so many of my good friends. You know, Paul Gamitter, Dina Demko, Tom Shore, like Carolyn Pizicki, Bradley Crianzo. Uh, there's just so many people um, that were involved in it. Um, Mike Scardillo handled some special effects and I just love being on set with Mike and making stuff bloody. And we just had a lot of fun making that movie. It was, it was really a, uh, an eye opener to, um, the amount of work and the level of commitment you need to have and put into a film. And, uh, because I loved making faces so much, I was there with it, but you know, it's kind of, um, uh, an eye opener that if, you know, anything less is, is not going to get it done. Right. And so, um, you know, when you got your back against the wall and you're making a film like this and, um, you're putting your, all your passion into it, you know, the, the audience is going to see the difference, you know, when you're putting that much into it, they're really going to notice it. And I think we did that with faces. I mean, everybody put so much work into it and so many hours and we just had such, I think we had 17 shooting days mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, just, the, just the commitment from everybody involved, um, Joe Pariskin, uh, who's uh, kind of um, not in this doing acting anymore, but he was just great to work with um, on that. Uh, and, and just so many great people and, and great locations that we had for that. It was just a wonderful experience. I, mean, I love when people reference it. And the film has its shortcomings technically because back then we really didn't have the, the kind of gear that we have now and, and the resources that we have now. But uh, right. With that said, I think if you take it for what it is, it's like a really gritty little indie film um, that we shot entirely in my hometown of Jersey City. So it's 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 a special film to me, and I'm and I'm so glad that people enjoy it because, you know, speaking of my band, Vlad the Inhaler, that film is basically based upon a song that we wrote called Faces in the Wall. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we saw that come to life in the film, and yeah, it's uh. Yeah, I appreciate that you revisit that too, because uh, I, I kind of consider it in my in my own mind a classic. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was just just so great, man. It's just seeing that character lose his mind and just <laughs> at the end of the movie, he's like, ah, ha, ha, and just he just you know, it's just I loved it. I I love that. I love that, and just watching watching him watch a movie like that, watching a movie like Black Wake and indie you know just indie films in in general because because when i sit down and watch indie films i i know what to expect and i know what not to expect and just watch a great movie that someone that put together with a lot of good friends and a lot of close 
people that, that works with a director or producer and create something. And if I want to go see a blockbuster, you know, you know, movie, I'd go see that or I could watch indie, you know, I, I, you have that option there and I do enjoy indie movies because it's just, there's, there's so much passion behind it and just how everything is done with a independent movie. Yeah, I think I think there's a different level of appreciation when when you see an independent film that you know did not have um, millions of dollars behind it, or the kind of access um, that a Hollywood studio would have, and you still see that someone can make a moving or 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 um, uh, a passionate, dramatic, scary, whatever whatever their theme is, uh, they they can make a good version of that with very little resources. It reminds you um, about it reminds you about where the art comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, it reminds you about where you know what 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 can be done with resourcefulness, with passion, right. um, with hard work. Um, and because you know we go we, sometimes we go to the movies now, and you, you know you have people criticizing you know multi million dollar CGI effects. Because the audience is kind of spoiled. Like when you have that, when you're throwing that much money at something, it seems like people, there's no place for imperfection in their viewing of this film. And um, what's great about indie stuff is that you appreciate some of the imperfections because you realize the length that this, that, that, that these creators went to, to uh, deliver their story to you. And uh, this is why I love independent film festivals. Cause when you meet them and you're like, how did you do that? Or, Oh my God, you were so great. What have you been in before? Uh-huh. Um, and you just find so many talented people, uh, you know, in, in that kind of uh, a setting. And uh, that's what I love about indie stuff. And that's what I love about the stuff that uh, we do and, and, and what our colleagues and our friends do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's amazing what what the stories that are told and how how it's told and when when we were last talking when I did mention about like bands and music stuff we mentioned Marvel movies. Did you guys catch that Morbius trailer for Morbius the Living Vampire? Yeah. Oh, man. I they gave me chills. And I dig it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I'm excited. I'm excited to see that man because reading reading in the comics growing up of him battling Spider Man, and then even on the TV show when they had the animated TV show I used to watch on Saturday mornings, they introduced like Blade and and Morbius. That was just so great. And now actually seeing him like in person is fantastic. And I I think that this movie. It it's gonna make people uh, forget what Jared Leto did a few years ago, you know, and I, I think he's gonna <laughs> he, he I, I'm hoping he pulls it off. You, you you know what I'm you know where I'm going at. I'm hoping this is like it. He pulls it off, and I think he's going to because he's he's done some great stuff, and and I I don't blame him for being pissed about Suicide Squad, man. I I thought that was just wrong, you know. Yeah, it, it's not his fault he was no. stuck with a shitty script. I like no. him as an actor. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking forward to to Morbius. I have always been a fan of, like, some of the lesser known characters, you know? Like, I was yeah. thrilled when they, you know, announced they were making a Doctor Strange film. You know, yeah. I've always been a fan of Doctor Strange. And then when I heard about Morbius, I'm like, oh, thank God. I'm like, oh, this is going to be so cool. Yeah. And the, the trailer looks good. So, listen... I, anyone who knows me knows that I am not one of these, you know, Facebook film critics, you know, yeah. who just wants to slam everything and pick apart everything. The movie will either be good or it won't, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm just, I'm looking forward to seeing it. It looks pretty cool and I, I'm psyched for it, to be honest. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited about it. How about, how about you, Tom? Are you excited about this? Yeah. I, well, um, it, uh, the trailer looks good. Um, mm-hmm. and I think the casting is great. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like Morbius. I don't know if I'm, I've been like the biggest fan of Morbius as far as like, if this movie never came out, I don't know if I would care. But <laughs> 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 to be honest, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, now the Venom thing was a little bit cooler for me, I think. Cause yeah. I was looking forward to seeing that. 
Um, but with that said, you know, it, what they're able to do now with some of these characters and bring them to life. And I think that, you know, I, I think they're, tr- they're, they're basically trying to find that right formula with these, cause this is Sony again, right? Yeah, yeah. this is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think Sony's trying to find that right formula where they could kind of follow Marvel's thing, but, but like, I think they're doing like a touch of the DC darkness to mm-hmm. it, you know? Yeah. Um, that's, that's how Venom came across. And I think that's how Morbius, the trailer for Morbius kind of comes across that way too. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see if they do a good job on it. I do like the character. Um, but if, if it, if it doesn't do well, I don't know if I'd be surprised. Yeah. Just because, Again, I don't know. I don't know how big of a character Morbius is going to be for people outside of comic book fans. Yeah, you know, like Spider Man is like everybody knows Spider Man. You know, even adults mm-hmm. that don't read comic books, they know who Spider Man is or Superman. Or like those are characters a little bit easy to sell, yeah. easier to sell. But um, you know, I have high hopes. I mean, I listen. I'm a big fan, and we we discussed this the last time. I'm a big fan of all the Marvel movies, and I like the DC movies too. Like, I just love to see these studios putting all my favorite old comic book characters on the screen. And my hope is always that they're just going to continue to get better at it. The storytelling and the visuals, yeah. um, because I just think it's amazing. The stuff that they've done with, I never would have imagined in my wildest dreams that I'd see the Avengers on screen fighting with Thanos the way that they, that they did oh, that. Yeah. Never, never would have imagined that would be impossible. So I'm very appreciative of all that type of stuff. So I hope it does well. I hope it, and I hope it is good. I'm, I'll, I'm going to go see it. So. Yeah. I, you know, Tom, Tom and I talk all the time. Like whenever I see someone come back from like Avengers, like infinity war say, and they're complaining, I'm like, you realize that when we were growing up, we watched like a bodybuilder spray painted green. <laughs> and we thought that was the coolest thing we had ever seen, yeah. you know, or, <laughs> spider-man like throwing ropes from his hands and we were blown away now we get to see these characters <laughs> fully realized like even like the shittiest marvel movie like i'm not a i'm the biggest fan of say like thor the dark world but mm-hmm. it's still fucking thor on yeah. the big screen yeah. you know <laughs> so i'm like holy shit i never thought i'd get this yeah you know to tom's point it's just amazing so as far as I'm concerned, they could dig up some fucking character I never heard of, make a movie out of it, and I'll, I'll probably be okay with it. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's like um, Guardians of the Galaxy. No one, no one really knew who the hell Guardians of the Galaxy were, except the, except people that follow the com the comics, and they're like, oh yeah, the the these group of misfits. Yeah. And then when they're like, yeah, they're making a movie about them. A lot, I know a lot of people are like, yeah, that's like that's gonna work. And what happened? <laughs> they turn out to be the like some of the best <laughs> characters, likable characters, man, because they just they, yeah. They did something, you know? I mean, who would have thought, like, you know, me watching Dave Batista, seeing him years in a WWE ring, you know, body slamming, kicking Triple H's ass and winning the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania, and this guy's painted up, you know, as Drax the Destroyer. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You know, if... I wonder. They got a talking raccoon, a talking CGI raccoon, and a tree. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Vin Star- Diesel and Bradley Cooper, and uh, it's uh, James Gunn has the magic formula, man. He's, yeah. uh, he's got the Midas touch when it comes to those films, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. I just think it's you know when you watch the films, you could see it, and uh, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. My son absolutely loved it. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. You know, I I sincerely believe this that music has a hell of a lot to do with it. Oh god. And yeah. the music and the music that Gunn utilized on that soundtrack, it's just great, you know, great rock and roll throwback stuff that everybody likes. You might not have heard it in twenty years, but when you hear it you like it and it's it's just uh you know, I, I think that in a lot of cases that helps to make the movie, and with with that combination of characters, that music, and 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 then the uh, the full power of Marvel behind him to do whatever he wanted to do visually. It's just you know, I, I, it's it's like I said, these films are amazing. Yeah, it's it, that's that's going to be it. It's I'm I'm interested to see but what. Not cinema. What's that? <laughs> No, I said, but they're not cinema. <laughs> yeah, no, but but they're fun well, and entertaining. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, they're fun and entertaining, man. They're fun and entertaining. You go, you go there for like a couple hours, an hour, thirty minutes, and just, you know, just watching these characters that you you read in the comics. I was a big Thor th- fan when they when they said Thor was coming to big screen. I was like, I was twelve years old again. I loved it, and yeah. I'm interested to see what James Gunn does with suicide squad too because that's going to be interesting with him being in you know behind the director scene on that right there you know he's going to bring some of those elements yeah that is that is yeah yeah Yeah. that is interesting and when i i saw i read that the other day and i thought that was very interesting to kind of see how that's going to turn out if that's going to revitalize dc Mm -hmm. it 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 will i'm looking forward to wonder woman 1984 that looks freaking awesome yeah yeah yeah, I'm looking forward to yeah, that one. Yeah, that that looks that looks amazing. I'm looking forward to that one. What about the Birds of Prey? That looks interesting there with Harvey Quinn and uh, the rest of the cast there. Um, yeah, so yeah, so and so. I know, uh, I know. I, I've I'm, seen I'm, the trailer a few times now, mm-hmm. and I think that's the kind of movie that I'm either really gonna love or I'm really gonna hate. I don't think there's gonna be any middle ground. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I know DC, it's like DC rules. If you, you look at, I probably mentioned this to you last time I talked with you, Tom. DC, they, they rule the tele, they, they rule the small screen, like, especially like with the CW shows, yeah. like Arrow, yeah. Flash, yeah. Legends, Supergirl. Marvel think, rules, yeah, yeah, the big screen. No, no, I'm sorry to cut you off. I was going to say, no, since fine. we last talked, I remember that. And I have watched Flash and Arrow, and you're right. They're excellent. The shows are great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're 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 great. Um I haven't kept up with them forever, but um thank God, you know, I could go back and str- uh, binge watch, <laughs> you know. But um Yeah. It, it, it's funny because Todd made a point and I was laughing about it because it, it made sense, you know, talking about the like uh, complaining on Facebook. You could sit there and binge watch hours of your favorite TV show. But then when you sit down to watch Irishman, you're complaining because it's three hours. <laughs> yeah. I laughed. Yeah, I laughed. Right, right, right. I was like dead on, right. man. Dead on. It's like, yeah. what the hell, people? It's a pause button, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. It's. It's like when um, I watched, uh, I believe it was, I forgot what movie it was. I think it was The Departed, because that was about three hours long, you know, with the Leonardo. And... Well, Avengers Endgame was three hours. Yeah. Yeah, I got up. Avengers Endgame was three hours, yeah. Yeah, when I went to go see it, me and my wife, we shared one drink, and I just sipped on it the whole time I was there. I didn't even get up and go to the bathroom once. Now, at home... I'm sitting there, you know, after a while there, you know, hit pause, get up, you know, get something to drink, come back, sit down, watch some, pause, get up, you know. So the three-hour movie took me almost about four hours, it seems like, but I enjoy it, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and movies used to have intermissions, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to that, man? You, you imagine if they did intermissions nowadays, how, how, people it would blow people's minds, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, they did it when I went to go see uh, The Hateful Eight. Okay. Um, They did an intermission then. Mm -hmm. And that was the special, you know, opening uh, of the film. Um, They did an intermission for that, which is pretty cool, actually. Nice. Nice. You know, movie movie going used to be much more of an event. Like, my grandmother gave to me before she passed away. I have a box. Like, you used to go, if you went to see a big movie... Um, like, uh, I have some of these for the 10 commandments, King of Kings, uh, uh, the sound of music. You used to actually get a bit, a program, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, and it would tell you, you know, when intermission was going to be because going to the movies was a, like going to a Broadway show. It was, people would get dressed up and going to the theater was a big event, you know? Yeah. Um, now it's like, oh, we're going to the multiplex. You know, there's 37 different movies showing. No, you know, it's not a big deal anymore. But listen, man, I'm in my 50s now. My bladder would love to have an intermission uh, during, <laughs> during all, all, all the 
dude. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm right there with you, man. That is just I'm 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 41 and still it's just me and when me and my wife do go out to the movies end up getting getting a large large drink and we sit there and we sip on it together and stuff and then about it, if it's like a two hour or something movie there towards the end and I'm sitting there I'm rocking I'm like come on in credits in credits again credits <laughs> you know I mean if I really have to go I get up and go and I come back and I'm there you know I'm like I'm like honey what did I miss <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's just, Listen, that's what the wide mouth Gatorade bottle is for, you know, so you don't have to get up. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure the lady next to me last time appreciated it, but you know what? That's her problem. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have a good aim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she should sit somewhere else next time. <laughs> Me and me and my friends when we we'd go to the theater. It's funny to mention that because when me and my friends we went to the theaters one time and we went. It was a couple times. One time we went to the theater. It was during like the holidays. We were all working our asses off. We had like one day off. What do we do? Let's go see. Let's go. Let's go see Beowulf. Oh, that looks interesting. It's like one friend's like, yeah, Angelina Jolie's like, you know, it's like it's CGI, dude. It's like, it's, it's like, you know, whatever. Let's go see it. So we went and seen it. During the middle of the movie, we're sitting right it's smack in the middle. I don't know why. we Right smack into the, in the theater there. We all fall asleep, man. <laughs> we get, we wake up towards the end of the movie. And everyone, we're, we're getting up, we're leaving, and everyone's looking at us and stuff. And we're like, it was like, oops. It was like, we probably all were snoring. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the hell but then another the time we snuck in snacks man we snuck in like to a big bag of doritos it was like around during the winter where like a bag of doritos cans of coke and stuff and like you know like the reese's and we're sitting like right there we i forgot what movie we seen but we're sitting right there and you know how the guy comes in checking looking and stuff right he yeah, looks over yeah. and he sees all of us there we are we're passing a bag of Doritos around just sitting there <laughs> and he looked at us and my brother was with us and he and he walked over to us and my brother was like what I was like we paid <laughs> and he turned, <laughs> walked off <laughs> but it was nice. it was great times yeah, it gets expensive these days you know? yeah it does it does it, it gets yeah. it gets really expensive but I have enjoyed tonight having both you guys back on again. I I love oh, it. Yes. I love it. And uh, yeah, thanks, man. It was really great. Yeah, no, no problem. Is there any anything that you wanna wanna share before we cl- close out on the on the podcast tonight? Well, just as always, man. We encourage folks that like. Uh, you know, high quality, low budget, independent films to check us out at theaterofterror.net or check out the theater of terror on Facebook. And that's theater spelled T H E A T R E. Check us out for our upcoming projects. Uh, keep your eyes peeled, uh, for our Indiegogo campaign, which will we'll, uh, probably be launching, uh, by the end of this month, uh, to raise some funds so that we could bring the, uh, audience some, some kick-ass, uh, locally shot horror films. So, yeah, that's uh, my final message. Todd, uh, I know we have a Grindhouse coming up. Uh, Yep. So the next Grindhouse Nights Film Festival is coming up um, February 29th, Leap Year Madness, at uh, Roxy and Duke's Roadhouse in uh, Donellan, New Jersey. We've got some amazing short films lined up and some great live entertainment. And if anyone listening has a creepy uh, film they'd like to submit, uh, submissions end uh, this, uh, Saturday, actually, uh, January the 25th. So get your submissions in now on film freeway slash grindhouse nights film festival. And we hope to see everyone at the, the next event, February 29th. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Todd, Tom. As always, man, you always love having you on and uh, discussing movies and discussing about everything in between and everything that you guys do for independent movies. And before we do close out, I do want to mention that um, you can follow more 
of the Everett Lee Show over on podcastcity.net. You can head over there to check out shows such as the Everett Lee Show, the Imaginarium with Scott and Todd, Super Radio Brothers, Final Score, Deathmatch Russell Podcast, Russell Popcast, and much, much more over on podcastcity.net. Follow them on Facebook, Podcast City Network. Give them a thumbs up and send them a tweet over on Twitter at Podcast City Net. You can follow more Everett Lee over on uh, Everett Lee Show on Facebook. Send me a tweet over on Twitter at the Everett Lore Score Lee and follow me on the following for the audio portions of this podcast and the previous release podcast over on YouTube channel Everett Lee Show, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, and Podbeam. Download those apps, give a rating and a review. I certainly would appreciate it. And that is it for the Everett Lee Show. I want to wish everyone a good night, and I'll see you again next week for another episode of the Everett Lee Show. Peace.